Good afternoon YouTube. Welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Today I want to showcase the Spinnaker Dumas. And I have five different variations of this watch. We're going to be taking a look um, a little more in detail than I normally do when I'm doing my video reviews. Um, generally, I've gotten some um, uh, requests from folks who want to see a little more of the watch. So I'm going to showcase, um, again, the Spinnaker Dumas. And of course, all these watches I'm going to be featuring right now are um, on the channel already. And you can check out more of the, I guess, more of the more personalized review with my face and of course just talking about my opinions on watches etc etc but some folks really just want to see the watch so I want to put up a video uh, that showcases strictly the watch just for you guys who I guess appreciate a little more of the in-depth shots and uh, more information regarding the watch as opposed to I guess more of like my infomercial so to speak right so today um, we're gonna start off with this one here um, and and forgive me I am gonna be reading stuff off directly off the spinner website so I don't make any kind of mistakes. Um, as always, there is a link in the description where you can check out these watches directly from the manufacturer, look at their close-up shots, and as always, my email address is in the description of every single video. If you have any kind of questions, don't hesitate to, to reach out and ask. I get back to every single email. I always have the time to get back to people. So let's check it out. So this one, I believe, and I'll double check this be when, before the video is over. I believe this one's called the Regatta. Uh, now, this particular model, again, is called the Dumas. The Dumas is a, uh, in a nutshell, a 1970s inspired watch with an octog octagon case. It's bold, it's masculine, and what I really like about it, it, it kind of steps outside the lines from your classic kind of Submariner style. All your watches nowadays, uh, well I shouldn't say all, but many watches coming off like, um, you know, uh, those crowdfunding sites and companies that pop up on the social media networks. You know, we hear a lot of good things and we hear a lot of bad things about brands like that. And remember, nobody's really making anything that's really garbage. And value is subjective. I can give you guys all the specifications. We can go down that spec list for guys who are watch collectors like myself who look for specific things in a watch. But ultimately, all that really matters is your specific check boxes and whether or not a watch is made of, of good quality and I can wholeheartedly tell you that if you look at a watch that gets a lot of um, you know a lot of negative publicity on the from YouTube from what I call the watch snobs when you talk about brands like Fleet Bowl already and movement again every watch is gonna be a little bit different but nobody's making anything that's garbage and when you pick up any of these watches there may be slight nuances some differences you'll say hey I think this feels a little bit nicer a little bit better quality but nothing is uh, not to quote Archie luxury but nothing really is a shitter I mean even $30 watches that you buy just from China, AliExpress are quite incredible for what you're paying. So just kind of keep that in mind. When you pick up a watch like this, this for me, and for many, many folks, checks all the boxes. I mean, and we're gonna go over those boxes and my personal boxes as well. So I'm gonna be showcasing today the Regatta, the Tangerine, uh, and uh, what else we got here? I have the, and again, after the video, check it off the website. Um, again, this one is the Regatta, Regatta White, they call it. The Tangerine, the Sahara, which is like a green and kind of vintage cream. We have uh, a sandblasted version, which is, I believe, discontinued. It's not on their sites. So I don't remember the exact name. And then we have the Dark Turquoise. Um, all these watches are quite incredible. I also have, it's not here right now. I left it at my folks' house. Um, the Cobalt Crimson, which is a GMT version. And that's got that Pepsi bezel. Absolutely stunning watch. Every time I pick up this watch and say, oh man, I got a lot of them, you know, which one am I going to wear today? And I kind of forget about the watches I have. When I pick it up, I say, oh, this is my favorite. And then I go back and I pick up a different color and I'm like, no, no, this is my favorite. It's really hard to find the favorite with these watches. So again, let's check out the Regatta White. Now I do apologize in advance if this is upside down. I don't believe it is, but I'm kind of new to these close-up videos. So bear with me during this learning curve. Remember, all I'm really trying to do is showcase what the watch looks like. I will show you what it looks like on the wrist, but for more of like that shot that's a little bit further back, seeing what it looks like on the actual person and not just on the wrist, check out the full in-depth video. Just go to my channel and search for, you know, for in this case, uh, Fat Cat Spinnaker Dumas, and you'll find all these reviews. So check this out. Now this one is a non-GMT version. I like that they've done, you know, I can, we can nitpick watches to death. I can say, oh, I like that they did this and this. And I don't want to give you guys a, a, a bunch of BS. You know, uh, some folks will say, oh, I love how they did their hands really large. 
For me personally, the way that I collect, nothing really bothers me when it comes to watches. Um, you know, of course, there's going to be watches that might have, you know, sloppier bezels than others, but this is not one of them. Like the bezel on this, super tight. This does have a glass bezel insert, and every one of these watches, I believe, has the glass bezel insert, uh, but again, don't quote me on that. They might make different uh, variations of this watch that don't have that. If I find that information, I will let you know. But from what I can tell, this does have a glass bezel insert. Again, you have that hexagon-shaped case, which I absolutely love. It really just uh, gets away from your standard Submariner that we see all over the place, even, even like your Omegas. And don't get me wrong, those are all great watches, no matter what brand you choose. But I do like this more vintage styling. It just has, it's so angular, it's so masculine, and it just really reflects the light really well. We do have some mirror polishing around the edges of that case, and of course around the bezel and the bezel sides. If you are looking for a tool watch, and you're going to, let's face it, most people are not using their watch to dive or do anything like that. But, you know, the the bezel, even though I'm wearing gloves, the bezel is a little bit slippery. It, the engravings or the recessions here, as far as that gear-edged bezel, are very shallow, so you don't get a great grip. Plus, being uh, polished, you know, it, it's it's a little bit difficult to turn, but stuff like this doesn't really bother me at all. And I don't, you know, so everybody's different, so buy what makes you happy. Uh, this does have an exhibition window on the back, milled clasp, 316 stainless steel, and of course, the color, if you can't see it by the video ready, that bright white with that royal or that dark navy blue, excuse me, face. Um, it, this has a very nautical kind of vibe to it. I always kind of call this my, my, my boating watch. You know, it just has a very summery, I could, you know, just picture yourself on a boat, going out there crabbing, fishing on a sailboat. It just, uh, it's just a beautiful looking watch. Now, moving on these is going, this is going to check the box for, I mean, arguably, really, in my opinion, any watch collector, you have, um, you know, size is always got to be check boxes. But for me, what do I mainly look for is what is it made out of? One, do I like it? Absolutely. Two, what is it made out of? We have 316L stainless steel. And after that, you know, what kind of movement do we have? Those are the most important things. This is an NH35. So arguably, again, a time-tested, very robust, very reliable movement. Um, I, I, To be honest with you folks, I've never had a problem with any movement that I've ever owned. So all these watches coming out of China, coming from overseas, whether it's, you know, whether they're coming from China, Malaysia, um, you know, um, Hong Kong, Japan, United States, Switzerland, whatever the case may be, everybody's making good stuff. I mean, these are fantastic watches. And if you don't have a spinner in your collection, I highly encourage you to pick this bad boy up. Our next color variation, this one is the sandblasted version. And this is uh, very subtle. Um, I think... You know, this was my very first Dumas, and I love this watch, don't get me wrong, but I lean a little bit more towards the uh, the other variations. I think the shark mesh is nice, but this is has a very, very subdued titanium kind of look. It looks like titanium, but it's not. This is stainless steel that's just been kind of like sandblasted. What I like about this is the color combination as well. We have that kind of matte gray. Again, it is a polished or polished like glass bezel. Uh, so, of course, it does look like it's polished, almost like ceramic, but um, it is actually glass. Um, as far as that crystal, these do have sapphire crystals with an anti-reflective coating. Uh, I'm not going to get too involved in the in, in all the specifications. You know, you have your 44 millimeter case diameter, 15 millimeters of thickness, uh, 300 meters of water resistance, and lug to lug 48. And these are all the same on all these watches. Uh, beautiful bracelet on this, though. I mean, milled clasp. You can, you'll, if you look on like AliExpress and eBay, there's all kinds of shark mesh bracelets. Uh, this is right up there with my Aragon bracelets that I've talked about many years. It's great quality. Uh, the tolerances are great. I mean, it, it's just a very high quality watch. No matter what color you get, you're going to be happy. Unfortunately, this one's not available anymore. So, very cool looking watch. Again, stainless steel, not titanium, although it does look like titanium. Uh, but it gives you that titanium look for a fraction of the cost, which is pretty good. Uh, but some folks like the lighter weight, and I, I get that, but um, just, just a stunning looking watch. So this next one here, and they do make this one right now on a standard bracelet in that same poly, that same kind of finish. It's just not the shark mesh. So you can pick that up. All these right now are in the range of 400 to 550. They just had a sale the other day on the Tangerine, which is 249. That sale is still going on. Um, I'll hit you guys with that one right now. This one is the Tangerine. Uh, definitely check this one out. This was one of my earlier ones as well. Black bezel insert. Got that bright Tangerine face. Uh, just a, a very 
uh, you know, I always kind of uh, associate these bright orange colors with dive watches, kind of like Doxa. Uh, it is a great wa watch, and what an amazing price, two forty nine. So again, link is in description. Use my coupon code. I think you get twenty percent off, fifteen or twenty percent off. Uh, I believe you can use that on that watch. Uh, man, don't snooze on these. Once these are gone, they're going to be gone. So I absolutely love this. I hope this Bitaker one day comes out with a like breast cancer awareness uh, variation or a Fat Cat Collections uh, variation with that pink and black. It would absolutely be stunning. So next variation here, uh, this was definitely one of my favorites, and I know I keep repeating myself, but uh, they're just all so cool, hence why I have so many of them. Uh, this one is the, what I call like the Tiffany blue and black. Uh, it's actually called dark turquoise. It does come with a turquoise uh, strap as well, but you know, you know I'm a bracelet guy, I just really like the way steel feels on my wrist. Uh, this is just an awesome variation. This is one of their newer variations. They do make this in a gray and black. They do make it in a black and blue. And I think one of their variation, uh, arguably, I think this one is the coolest one. It just really pops. Uh, just a stunning piece. Look at the way the case reflects the light with that mirror polish around the edges. Uh, it is just a great looking piece. Tolerances are great. That's when people talk about fit and finish, you know, with the watch knobs out there. I mean, I'm sorry, but go go take a $20,000 Rolex and we want to compare fit and finishing. I mean, I don't see how you can get any better than this. I mean, if we want to nitpick things and be like, oh, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the bracelet moves a little less. I highly doubt it does, but stuff like that is just really just, they're just, they're manufactured desires that, that what the watch community creates in order to rationalize the price. But really, you're, you're mainly paying for, yes, a lot of, you know, uh, eyes on the watch, a lot of quality control, absolutely. But, you know, to, when you compare it to a watch like this, I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to think that anybody could look at this and call this a shitter or say this is an inferior watch. I mean, it is absolutely stunning in every detail. And then the last variation watch is one that I would would never have thought I would have liked. It is green and cream. And this has just a very dated, old, vintage look to it. And I'm not really, if you've been watching me for a while, I'm not a huge green fan. But the way this execution is, it looks stunning. And this is, again, one of these watches by Skip Spinnaker that I keep going back to the site to see what color variations they've come up with. Um, I did just request the all black, because let's face it, you, you know, no matter how many variations you have of a watch, sometimes us as collectors, the more we get, the more we want things that are unique and different. But you know, when you like a watch, I think, in my opinion, you, you find a model you really like, you gotta get a black face, black bezel version. It's the most simplest uh, color variation, and it's just, it's, it's just, any of these watches can be worn with anything, but how could you not have the black, right? I mean, just, just, a, uh, just an amazing piece. So you guys will be seeing that at a later date as well. Look at that. I mean, what a great looking piece. Vintage styling, amazing price. Even at the $4 or $5 price range, this is spectacular. If you go looking at like Seiko's or Movado's, you're going to pay that for a lot of those. The Bulova's, they're upwards of like 700 bucks, some of them. And I'll tell you right now, compare this to like my Bulova Precisionist, there, there is no difference in quality. They're both awesome watches. I honestly feel like this is, is better made. Um, and probably just because it's a little more robust, a little thick. But uh, compare this to Invicta Reserve Level watches, it's on par. I mean, in most of the watches out there, you have to be careful with who you watch on YouTube. I know there's lots of great channels out there, and there's lots of channels who people still watch that, uh, you know, really just kind of take their word for it that they're experts. Remember, everybody has their own interests, myself included, but I'll always give you guys my honest, I'll always give these watches a fair shake, because um, they deserve it. They're, they're amazing quality, and very rarely do I get something that I say, ah, yeah, you know, this is a little bit overpriced for what you're getting. So absolutely stunning. Let's go ahead and throw this one on the wrist here. I mean, check that out, man. So vintage. That green, I just never would have thought I would have liked this color. It is stunning. Uh, let me go ahead and throw the blue on here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Get me on the boat. But do you see what I mean about that being very uh, very nautical? You know, that blue and white. I mean, it is just, it is just so summery. And then uh, let me show you the difference here with that shark mesh, give you an idea what that looks like. Yeah, I'd say, you know, I, I would say this one is my least favorite execution, just probably because it's such a matte finish. But, I mean, it's still badass, though. I mean, let me check it out. 
Uh, how could you how could you not like that? You know, it may not be uh, my my very favorite one, but it, it is stunning. And I think just because I'm not a huge fan of shark mesh, even though I have uh, several bracelets that are shark mesh, uh, if I had to do it, I would order this with the standard bracelet. But uh, when I ordered this, uh, this this particular version was the only one they had. And since then, this has been several years. They've come out with a lot of different colors. So, and. Um, I'm just gonna throw on one. We're at, we'll just throw on the, the turquoise here. Just this one here. Check this one out, folks. Oh man, that Tiffany. I'm, a, I'm calling it's turquoise, but I'm calling it Tiffany blue. Tiffany blue is a specific color for Tiffany and Company, so it's not technically Tiffany and blue. I think that is a is a copyrighted or a, a branded color, but it's similar. You know, they're all turquoise. And when you look at it on camera and you get it in person, I think it looks a little more turquoise when you get it in person. This makes it look a little more like baby blue, but it is more of a richer, deeper uh, turquoise. Just a, just a stunning piece. And then finally, I will throw you got, throw this one on the wrist here. We'll throw the uh, the tangerine on here. Very Doxa-like. You know, you can't... Doxa's kind of known for that bright orange. Just awesome. Look at that. 